What do you do when you have more people on stage than what you have monitor mixes? That's happened before, it's gonna happen again, and today we're gonna talk about how to get around that. How's it going everybody? This is Chuck and on today's Tutorial Tuesday we're going to do some tech tips and we're going to keep doing tech tips for the next little while. We spent a lot of time talking about vocals and we're going to shift temporarily and have some technology talk and specifically we're talking about monitor mixes. Uh, I'm going to be discussing how to set up a wired monitor mix and how the signal path works. We're going to be using this right here. This is a Rolls uh, let's see what it's called, a PM351. We've used these for ages. We still use them at our Cabot campus. We use them at our Sherwood student building. And we've actually used them on the Sherwood stage occasionally. Uh, now granted, at some of our locations, we have more advanced monitor equipment, ear packs. We have the Allen & Heath ME1s. Uh, but every now and then there is a need for it to add an additional mix. And when that happens, there's no need to panic because I'm gonna walk you through how to set this thing up. So let's check it out. This is a Rolls personal monitor station. I know it looks like there's a lot going on here. That's a lot of cables hanging off of this thing. So let's break this down and let me show you how it works. So I'm gonna take all of this apart here and take it piece by piece. Okay, obviously AC power adapter to power the unit and headphones, that's kind of a given because it's a monitor amp. All right, scenario number one. This is if you have enough monitor outs on your board and on your snake, you just need a simple way of powering the monitor out so you can hook up a pair of headphones. You're gonna take your monitor feed and you're gonna insert it into line input. And at this point, these two knobs on the right don't do anything. The knob on the far left that says line level is an overall volume knob for the monitor mix. The mix itself will be controlled from the front of house or iPad app depending upon your venue. Uh, if you had to share a mix with somebody, and this is what's kind of great about this, if you run out of mixes all together, you have seven people on stage and let's say you only have six mixes to send to them and there is no other feed, you can share a mix with somebody else. Uh, you have to find a way, of course, to split the mix feed, uh, which we can go into later on another discussion. I think most of y'all can figure that out. If you can't, I'd be more than willing to uh, help you walk through that process. But you're gonna take the shared mix feed, of course, plug it in. You're gonna take the instrument cable. Let's say this is a second or third acoustic player. And you're gonna hook it in here to the instrument in and then run it out to the board. So in this scenario, you don't actually need a DI anymore. Your DI is also the unit, which is nice because instead of having two pieces of equipment, you just have one piece of equipment and essentially you have the same amount of cables on stage. It's just routed a little differently. Now in this scenario, this far right knob becomes the instrument volume for the headphone mix. So this person may be sharing with somebody else and they can turn up their instrument and it won't affect the other player whatsoever. They'll just have to play nice with each other and agree on a mix they can both tolerate. Uh, if, say for example, the person sharing a mix sings and plays an instrument. So you've got a second acoustic guitar player, they also sing. You can take a wired mic and use the other input. Right here, goes in, and then back out to the stake. And now this person has control over their microphone, a control over their instrument, and a control over the shared mix. For a long time, we used these as our main monitor mix at the Sherwood campus and at the Cabot campus uh, before we had the ME1s and, uh, of course, digital boards that have tons of extra mixes. Uh, so one thing we did to clean up the stage a little is we invested in some of these uh, which we still have a few laying around. This is a PS16. This is a power station and splitter all in one. And what this does, it will split the signal into four outputs, but it will also power the unit via phantom power. So let's just say you've got a small venue, like a new student venue, maybe it's a church plant, 
and you have four monitor mixes. Some people are going to have to share, obviously. You've got six people on stage. Give your worship leader his own mix and drummer their own mix and somebody else their own mix, and then you're going to have a shared mix, okay? You would take that shared mix, hook it into the feed, make sure that it's powered up, and you would take a balanced cable and plug it in here. And at that point, you can get rid of the AC cable on here because this is powered through that. And that may not seem like a lot, but if you think that there could be four to six people all sharing one of these, that's four to six AC adapters that you don't have to have on stage anymore. And keep in mind too, this scenario is only for instrumentalists who also sing. So most of the time on stage, if it's just a guitar player or keyboardist, really, that's all you're going to be seeing on stage. Just a couple of things to make note of when using one of these. There are mono stereo switches for the headphone mix and for the instrument input. You'll need to make sure those are switched appropriately depending on the scenario. Uh, if you're using the PS16 power supply to split the feed and to power the mixes, it always has to be set to mono. And instruments will most of the time need to be set to mono unless you're running a true stereo signal out um, of the device. Secondly, there can sometimes be an issue of bleed. And what that is is the uh, monitor mix can sometimes bleed through the instrument channel on the board. You'll know this is happening most of the time because you'll hear the click track coming through that channel. So say this is the keyboard is using it and you notice there's a little bit of click coming through the keyboard channel. What that is is the monitor mix is bleeding. To take care of that, all you have to do is turn the instrument level up a little bit and then turn the gain on the board down just a little bit to compensate for that and it'll disappear. It usually only happens with instruments, not vocals. And, uh, and most of the time it, the culprit is because the instrument does not have enough signal going to the box itself. And if there's way too much compression on the channel, sometimes that'll happen. Uh, when sharing, just a quick note, there's a couple people on stage that should probably not share a mix if you can get away with it. First and foremost, I would recommend the drummer never share a mix. Uh, unless maybe if you have a drummer that works really good with, say, the bassist. Uh, but for the most part, the drums really drive the music. They've got to have a really clear mix uh, in order to stay up with the tracks, the clicks, and the cues, and all of that. Uh, at one time at our Sherwood campus, we only had four monitor mixes, and it was like that for several years, and we had to use these. And the way we had it set up was the worship pastor had a mix, the drummer had a mix, and then we put all of the instruments on one mix and all the vocals on one mix and divided it up that way. And that worked for a pretty good amount of time until the band started growing. We really didn't notice an issue until we started adding multiple electric guitar players and multiple keyboardists. Uh, but even if that's not the case, as we said earlier, if we've got plenty of extra aux sends on the board and we don't have an extra $600 in the budget to get another ear pack or an Allen & Heath ME1 to add to the monitor mix, uh, we can just simply add one of these to an aux send and get us another musician up and rolling. I hope that has helped you out. And if there's anything else you want us to cover, please let us know. We're super excited about what we can do to help you grow in your ministry. And y'all have a great day.